Hello, my name is Nakaya Rimmer. In this video, what we're going to be doing is looking at two examples of integration by parts. The first one is x times the sine of x. We're trying to find out what function this is the derivative of. Who has this as its derivative? And so to do this, we're going to use integration by parts. There's two functions, x and sine x. And we have to choose one of them to be u, the other one to be dv. We have the, new, the mnemonic hierarchy that says if you um, follow this strict um, choice of letting u be the following in, in decreasing order, log rhythmic functions, inverse trig functions, algebraic functions, trig or exponential in any order, going downward, whoever comes first, you should let u be equal to that. There are no log functions here. There are no inverse trig functions here, but there is an algebraic function. An algebraic function is one that is uh, polynomial or rational. And so x to the first power, y equals x, that's a algebraic function. That's what we're going to let u equal. That leaves the rest of it to be dv. And our task is take the derivative of the u, but the integral of the dv. Derivative of x is 1 dx, and the integral of sine x is negative cosine x. We call that v. The integral of dv is v. And so the formula has us putting together these terms in the following way. We have the product of u and v minus the integral of the product of v and du. So our original integral using this formula can be transformed into the product of u and v, negative x, cosine x, minus the integral of v du, minus the integral of negative cosine x dx. That double negative gives you a plus. And what have we really done? We've traded in our integral for another integral with an extra piece in there, with the product in there. But why do we do it? It's because the new integral is doable. And that's the goal with integration by parts. You want to trade in an integral for another integral, which is simpler. And so, yeah, the integral of cosine x, we know what function has cosine x as its derivative, sine x. And so this is it. We have exactly the antiderivative. If we were to take the derivative of negative x cosine x plus sine x plus c, we should end up with x sine x. Why not check it? What is the derivative of negative x cosine x, the first part here, the first term, derivative of the first, negative 1, times the second, cosine, plus the first, negative x, times the derivative of the second, negative sine of x. Then you have your second term there, who is sine x. As its derivative, we find that it, we get cosine x. C's derivative is just 0. What's going to happen here is that we have a negative cosine x and a positive cosine x. Those guys are going to cancel. And the product there is positive, x sine x. We did it. It checks out. It's correct. And that's our first example. Now, in the second example, I want to introduce a shortcut. Let me tell you when it happens, why you would want to do it, and how it works. And we'll use it on an example. So when, when can you use it? Well, if you have the, one of the following two situations, you could use it. If you have the integral of a polynomial times an exponential or the integral of a polynomial times a trig function that you can find the antiderivative of. It doesn't have to always be sine or cosine. The name of this method, if you want to look it up, is called the tabular method. Let me give you the exact steps while we apply them to a particular problem. We'll call this example number two. It actually comes from a volume question, which will come later. We'll, we'll, we'll study volume of revolution. But we can execute this integral. It's the product of x times the cosine of pi over 2x. Step number one in this method, the polynomial part, differentiate that down to 0. That's what you can do with polynomials each time you go down by 1 in exponent. Well, we take the derivative of x and we get 1. And then the derivative of 1, we get 0. All right, great. Now, in step two, it's our job to integrate the, the other part, the, the, here, in this case, the trig. Integrate that the same amount of times so you're at the same level of the zero. Now, when you integrate cosine of kx, what happens there is you get 1 over k. 
the sine of kx. You see, this multiplier out front, and this multiplier inside become, um, and, and becomes the reciprocal out front when you integrate. So um, cosine, what function has cosine as its derivative? It's going to be sine. So you're going to have the sine of pi x over 2, but then times 2 over pi. What function has the sine as its derivative? It's going to be negative cosine of that same pi x over 2, but then another 2 over pi, and that's how we end up with 4 over pi squared. Okay, so we've done step one, differentiated the polynomial down to zero. We've done step two, we've integrated the trig same amount of times. Now we're on to step three, and step three is where we're going to multiply a long diagonals that are going downward and to the right, and as we do that, we apply an alternating sign starts, starting with a plus. So x is going to be multiplied by 2 over pi sine pi x over 2. 1 is going to be multiplied by negative 4 over pi squared cosine pi x over 2. But to that product, we apply this alternating sign. If there were more terms, we have to continue alternating. And what this does for you is it hides behind the scenes all of the integration by parts formula. The first product there, uv, is going to be um, it's going to be uv, and the second product there is going to be minus the integral of v du. And everything is done for you. Putting those two terms together, we'll have 2x over pi sine of pi x over 2. 4 over pi squared, because the double negative makes it plus. Cosine of pi x over 2. Uh, the 2 pi is outside, and we have 0 and 1 as our bounds. I'm going to put a 1 in. I'm going to put a 0 in. The cosine of pi over 2 is 0. And the sine of 0, 0. Cosine of 0 is a 1. And the sine of pi over 2 is a 1. So two of these terms vanish. Two of them survive. Uh, the trig part gets replaced by 1s. So leftover is a 2 over pi minus 4 over pi squared. Last step, but we're done. I mean, that's the answer, but we'll go ahead and distribute. And what happens when the first multiplication goes through, the pi's cancel out. You just get a 4. Second multiplication, one of the pi's cancel out from the denominator, and you get an 8 over pi. That's your answer, 4 minus 8 over pi. Okay, so this is a shortcut. It only works in those two situations. Uh, it's called the tabular method. If you dig deep enough, you'll find that um, it can be used in other, tech, in other um, settings, but um, this is how we're going to use it here so we know that it works and it finishes it off. In those other settings, it might not finish all the way off. And so, um, but look it up for yourself if, if you want. Um, if you have any questions, don't be afraid to ask. I'm here to help. Um, stay tuned for the next video. I'll see you there. Uh, thank you very much for watching.